Hi friends, hi friends, hi friends. Happy Thursday, welcome to the cleanest night of the week. I hope you spoiled all the dudes and all the dads in your life with all the great goodies we made over the last couple weeks here on Periscope. I gave them all to my dad and hopefully he's putting them all to the test and enjoying them thoroughly. So you'll have to let me know in the comments if you made any of the um, man cave essentials. Oh, thank you so much for joining. Thanks so much. I look forward to seeing you too. Um, thanks so much. Hi, Tatiana. Hi, guys. Guys. Hello, hi Marianne, hi Mama Bear Oils. So great to see everyone, and I don't know about y'all, but I am having a week, so I am putting on my Patience Blend a little extra today. This is one of the emotional support blends for transition that I made. Hi Heather, and um, I'm just loving it so much because adulting is not easy. Um, hi guys, hi Terry. Adulting is not easy, especially when we are in the process of moving and checking in on the progress and managing all the different moving parts in our new house and managing subcontractors and this and that and it's just shenanigans all over the place and school for Olivia next year and lots of challenges so I am oiled up. Um, hi guys, you'll have to let me know also in the comments what oils you're using today because I love knowing that I was sipping on my magnesium mocktail earlier as well. Oh thank you so much Heather, you are such a charmer. So. Um, if you are new to my channel, I am so thankful for you and I know you could be doing a thousand and one things with your Thursday night, so it means a lot to me that you're here. My name is Hilary LeMay. For those of you that are new, I'm an essential oil educator and leader with doTERRA and that just means I love sharing all the awesome ways that you can put your essential oils and your wellness to uh, help you in your life along your way for emotional support and helping you kick chemicals to the curb and oh, the water for the mocktails. Oh yeah, you can use any sparkling water. So I like Lacroix, but you can use anything that you want. Ooh, clary, ginger, and rosemary sounds awesome. Oh yay, Catherine, it sounds like you're making an awesome diffuser blend in your place. Um, and especially you wanna have those oils on the go. And so I just love sharing this wellness lifestyle with all of you and this is especially for my oilers who are all over the world and I can't possibly support every single one with individual classes like this or one-on-one -on -one time. So it's a really great way for me to empower my oilers Oilers, and you all get to benefit too because uh, wherever you are in your journey if you're just getting started if you haven't gotten started yet you can reach out to me and I'd love to support you along your journey and get you going um, but if you might not have anyone in your life that is still involved with doTERRA or they're maybe not as excited as you or they're not providing you any continuing education you can always come here every Thursday and this is a safe place where we hang out and just talk all about wellness and kicking those chemicals to the curb one at a time awesome on guard today and motivate and peppermint and rosemary in the car. Oh, that is a great blend, uh, Terry. That is so fantastic. So you can swipe to the right or up depending on what kind of phone you have. You can share this broadcast with your followers. Oh, thanks, Lindsay. And you can tap the screen as many times as you want and that just lets me know that you're enjoying this and you're finding it fun. Ooh, Shelly is diffusing lemongrass and lavender. That does sound like an awesome summer blend. I will have to try that. Although lavender is growing on me, I will say. Um, it is not one of my favorites for sleep, but it's definitely got lots of great benefits. So, um, you know, and again, like I said, reach out if you need support and you want to get going. I'd love to help you and involve you in my private oil team and all the great resources there because tools support, education, um, all those things are really important. And along the lines of education, this is one of my favorite tools to share with my new oilers. This is the Essential Life book. I show this every week. And what I've bookmarked today is the section for cleaning. Um, you can go to 348 and 349. And in this book, there are lots and lots of great suggestions for cleaning and kicking those chemicals to the curb using just simple ingredients. And for example, tonight, all the recipes that I'm gonna be making are just going to have lemon and melalina and those two oils are in all of the starter bundles and all of the starter kits so everyone that got those you'll have the basics that you need you don't need every single oil just start small little by little um, you can also find some great educational resources now these are things that I provide my team free when they get started they get a they get a book and they get a bundle of tear pads and this is one of the tear pads from um, oillife.com and it has lots of great tips and recipes on the back for oil uh, oils for cleaning so this is a great resource and if you have of, uh, an upline leader who's providing resources, I highly recommend asking for some tear pads. We have all of our tear pads electronically for my team, so in our private team page, my team always has 24-7 access to all those resources because um, you know we're gonna be moving and in transition and I certainly don't want anyone having to wait for me if they need something. So I love empowering my oilers and we really become a family and we support each other and help out. So it's a great way to get
get all of your information and certainly having a book like this this is what we call the Oilers Bible because it's just got color photos and information and even at the bottom it has information on um, the anecdotal data and the research based evidence for each of the oils like this is juniper berry and in your book you can go down to the bottom and it just has so many citations for research and this book is just phenomenal one day uh, maybe if we fly to Fiji or something I will sit down and try to read it cover to cover because I have great intentions to do that but then I'm like ooh, I want to make that and ooh, I want to make that and then next thing we know I'm doing some things in the amazing test kitchen right so Anyway, enough about that, but most of you are probably familiar with the fact that the easiest way, really one of the easiest ways to get chemicals to the curb, which is what we do on Throw It Out Thursday every single week, is by taking the toxins out of our cleaning supplies because we're wiping down our counters, spraying our toilets, spraying our counters, spraying our mirrors and doors and door handles and all those things every single day, multiple times, especially if you have little ones. And making your own cleaning supplies is fast, it's easy, and we can control the ingredients that we are bringing into our home. We have no idea what it means when it says, uh, you know, all those crazy ingredients on the side. And you can certainly buy natural products that are for cleaning, um, you know, from Target or from the grocery store that say all natural, but what's the quality? We don't know. We don't know if they're using adulterated synthetic filled essential oils. Well, we know that we don't because doTERRA essential oils are the most pure available. And so I know that I'm doing the right thing for my family. Yeah. And it, you know, it's, um, it's so, it's so true Heather, because, um, like Heather and I, we, she, when she joined my oil family, we did a virtual chat where we had a play date and we made all of her cleaning supplies together. She had all the supplies and I just walked her through the recipes and we did it so fast and it's so it's such one of my favorite things really to do and that's why I love this platform of Periscope because I can show you with my own hands how simple it is and how fun it can be and it doesn't have to take a long time and it is a misconception that it's so time consuming you can't possibly make your own cleaning supplies but I guarantee you that it takes you less time to make your own glass cleaner or all-purpose cleaner than it does to actually get in your car put your seatbelt on turn your air conditioning on drive to the grocery store and wait in the checkout line and come home than it does to make your own. So that's what we do here. And I've made lots of cleaning supplies in the past on Periscope. So if you missed anything, you can always go back uh, to my YouTube archive, just keyword search my name there. Exactly, Lindsay, it sounds intimidating. And that's why I love showing you, it doesn't have to be. It's so simple and easy. And you can do it with friends, just invite friends to get together, especially if you're going to a bridal shower or um, you know a baby shower, you can make all these recipes. Yeah, and, and especially if you do live in a um, rural area, it's really hard to be able to go to Target if that's a 45 minute drive absolutely it's baby steps it's one thing at a time and it does make you feel so empowered that if your glass cleaner or all-purpose cleaner is empty I can just pop right down into my into my cabinet and get my vinegar get my water and get my essential oils and I can refill my cleaning supplies and it's so easy so it's really fun to do this for kiddos and for their friends and for your friends so bring some friends over and have that fun so tonight I'm just gonna add to all of our plethora of cleaning supplies that we've made together over the last 18 months here on Periscope and I'm going to show you um, how that you can clean with hydrogen peroxide naturally and so this is a bleach alternative so this is a way for us to kick the bleach to the curb and use hydrogen peroxide so it's going to have the same cleaning power and um, we're going to talk about what it is we're going to talk about what kind that you want to bring into your home and then we're going to talk about how to use it so we literally went to closing on our house two days ago and um, we were just really grateful for how fast our house sold and keeping your home clean whether you're putting it on the market or you're just keeping it nice and clean for you and your family it doesn't have to mean bleach it doesn't have to mean ammonia it doesn't have to mean a migraine to go with it oh thank you thank you Natalie um, and so tonight we're gonna do a natural bleach alternative for towels and linens so you know in your bathrooms when you have guests over and your towels and all that and your clothes your socks your shirts everything uh, it's gonna be a natural bleach alternative and we're gonna be using our essential oils along with hydrogen peroxide for that the second DIY is my DIY kitchen grout cleaner and if you look at my grout right there I used it and it works 
worked super well and I tried lots of other recipes and it just didn't do what I needed it to do. So I'm excited to share that recipe with you tonight if you have tile, whether it's in your kitchen or in your bathrooms, wherever in your home that you have tile. And then the last one is a amazing liquid toilet cleaner that you can just spray right under the rim and let it sit there. And then lastly, I'm gonna end with just a few practical tips for helping you get your house sold fast. Things that really helped us. Uh, I'm not gonna go into everything, but just a few really basic things. So we're gonna jump in. Oh, and in case you're wondering, tonight's nail polish of the week is blue. B-L-U, it's Zoya, and this is another dimension, and what I really love to talk to my oilers about, that this wellness lifestyle is not just about essential oils, it's about cleaning up our nutrition, moving our body, drinking water, increasing our uh, magnesium intake, and certainly kicking chemicals to the curb where we can in our beauty routine. Um, let's see, Mama Bear says she has a ceramic kitchen sink and bleach is the only thing that's worked. Well, hopefully this will work for you. You'll have to try it and let me know. Oh, hi, Andrew, thanks for joining. But as I was mentioning, non-toxic nail polish. It's a really great way to kick those uh, fumes to the curb because there are over 100,000 children under the age of six that are sickened by household cleaners every year. And we don't wanna be putting those things into the air for our kids. Nail polish, bleach, these ammonia-filled Windex products. We don't want that. Fragrances, all those nasty things, they can cause respiratory irritation, the migraines that I talked about, sneezing, watery eyes. And a third of those substances that are used in those fragrances in the fragrance and beauty industry are nasty and they can totally affect you and you just don't want those and um, many cleaners are pollutants and they contribute to smog they reduce the quality of our drinking water and they can really affect our pets health too so we don't think about how our pets are breathing these things in and licking the floor because if you have dogs or cats they're on the floor resting licking the floor they might be um, you know inhaling these uh, uh, things that you're cleaning if they're cleaning near where you are uh, cleaning you know because they want to hang out by you so we're gonna to start out with um, just talking about what peroxide is so it's a strong oxidizing agent and it's more viscous than water it's odorless and it's clear and it's used a lot for things like first aid kits oh hi hon yay my honey's watching from work um, oh thanks cat I'm glad your kitty cat approves we got to keep your cats and all the all the dogs and pets and bunnies and birds uh, everyone in your family healthy and um, really happy so there are um, several kinds of peroxide, but because of its cleansing properties, it's a tremendous natural workhorse for our cleaning. And so we use it as a bleach replacement and we're kicking the bleach to the curb. So what's the difference? There are two kinds of um, peroxide and I only have the one because obviously for, for obvious reasons as I go, you'll be able to figure that out. But 3% peroxide is what you wanna bring into the home. There's 3% peroxide and then there's 35% peroxide. So you can do the math less is more. The 3% just signifies that there's 3% peroxide in the dilution. So 97% water and 3% peroxide. So there's uh, a 35% peroxide that is a commercial use. So you don't want that. That um, is not what we want for our purposes. It's a higher concentration and that could irritate your skin. So we don't want 35% uh, dilution in our home. So you can either get this run-of-the-mill uh, hydrogen peroxide like you can get at Walgreens. This is just basic. This is more for along the lines of like your first aid and your things like that, like cuts and bruises. Yeah, you can absolutely dilute the 35% too, but you're not in a lab, so how are you gonna, I mean, you can certainly do the math and dilute it down, but you absolutely could, um, so that you're totally fine on that front. But for us, I prefer to use food grade hydrogen peroxide. This is 3% food grade. The brand is Essential Oxygen. And it just says the cleanest way to clean everything. You can get this on Amazon. I think it was maybe like five or ten dollars. Um, I got a couple because I like to fill out my cleaners all at once. So you can get a bunch of them on Amazon or you can check your health food store, your natural market, maybe um, the vitamin shop, wherever you shop. You can give them a call in advance and just ask if they have food grade hydrogen peroxide in 3% dilution. So again, I prefer to use food grade. Um, the purpose is to be able to clean with the same power of bleach but without the um, toxins, without any of those uh, airborne things that you are gonna irritate your respiratory system. It just depends. Um, like I make the grab cleaner and this has a little bit left in it from the last time that I made a batch and it lasts a really long time. It just depends on how much surface area that you're covering with your solutions um, and how big your home is. Where's my uh, paper towel? So it just depends on how big your home is. Like I like to fill up all my cleaners um, at the same time and then, you know, 
as I go, but it just depends on every home really. So um, yeah, and you can use it. There's so many uses. I might even have to do a little mini series. I might have to do a couple more um, demos with Periscope because I just, there are so many great uses and I want you to realize that this is a great alternative to bleach so you don't have to miss out on that bright, fresh, crisp white um, laundry that you're used to using bleach. So this is a great alternative. So like I said, you can definitely have both. I would keep this in the medicine cabinet for cuts and abrasions and things like that. Um, and you know, for cleaning anything like first aid, but this is really what you wanna use for cleaning. This is food grade and you wanna be able to use this for cleaning. So that's my little spiel on that. And um, like I said, you can, um, you know, you can purchase it and just call in advance. I hate driving around town trying to find something when I could have just made a phone call and wasted and, and saved myself some time. So just give the places a call that are in your local area uh, if you need to find uh, food grade peroxide that you cannot find if you might not be able to find it um, at the first couple places that you look. So. We're gonna start our demo. The first recipe that we're gonna do is my natural laundry whitener, and this is our bleach swap. Yeah, I'm totally an Amazon junkie too, especially if I can get it like the next day, I don't have to leave my house. So I got a set of 12 of these cool little um, flip top caps from uh, Aroma Tools, and these are pet grade plastic. So this is a plastic that is safe to use with your essential oils, and it's safe to store these things with your essential oils. Just a little tip before I forget, in case I forget to mention it later. When you're using peroxide, you wanna have a little bit of venting, like a little ventilation, because you wanna let the um, the uh, chemical reaction just sort of breathe a little bit, especially if you're using like baking soda, like we're gonna make in the toilet cleaner. So you can just sort of prop that up a little bit in your medicine cabinet or in your cleaning cabinet or whatever um, when you make these things, if any of them have baking soda in them. So this is the laundry brightener. We're gonna use lemon and we're gonna use this bottle. And what we're gonna do first is just add our essential oils. Now I like to add for recipes like this where I really want the cleaning power to be on point, I'm gonna use two drops per ounce of oils. So this is a 16 ounce bottle. So I'm gonna add 16 drops of our um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna use, yeah, I'm gonna use 16 drops of essential oil for the 16 ounce bottle. Now, like I said, if you want to superpower that, you can double it, um, but we're gonna do this first and then you can always gauge and see, but I really like the cleaning power of this with 16 drops, so I, I misspoke. We don't need two drops, we're just gonna do one drop per ounce in this. All right, so we're gonna do 16 drops per ounce, so 16 drops in this bottle. All right, so there's our lemon essential oil in our bottle. And then all we're gonna do is just fill this with our hydrogen peroxide. And I'm gonna use a funnel so I don't spill because this is really great quality stuff and we just don't want any snafus. And what you can do if you just wanna test out the quality, yeah, lemon essential oil is like four cents a drop. If you wanna test the quality of the cleaning power, you can just go ahead and make a small batch and um, you know just try it out. And what I like to do is just simply use this the same way that I would use bleach in my home. So we haven't used bleach in years, but um, what most people do is they would take like a cap full of bleach and put it in whatever bleach compartment you have in your washing machine or what I would recommend doing. Um, no, I wouldn't do this for colors. This is for whites only. Yeah, lemon is like the holy grail of cleaning. Um, but what I would do is take a bin, if you have like a metal tub or a um, like a bucket that you use for cleaning, I would do a soak in advance just because you just don't know. I mean, it's been years since I've used bleach and I don't know how to use bleach anymore because it's been a long time. But um, I would recommend just soaking your your uh, your clothes if anything is really soiled. Like if you had, uh, you know, if your little one's got a scratch or a scrape and it uh, went through the clothes with blood or a grass stain or um, any food or anything like that, then you can use that. And um, what you'll do is just shake it up a little bit and then you just, you can spray it, you can kind of squeeze it right onto whatever surface of your clothing that you want to um, protect. So if you have a little soaking basin, you can go ahead and use that and just squirt it right onto the surface. And then what I would do is just go like that with the material, kind of rub the material together and just squirt it on there, let it soak for a bit, and then you can toss it in the wash. Um, or you can just do a cap full and unscrew the cap and just do a cap full of this. Uh, you can use it however you'd like to use bleach. Now, you can use this for your grout cleaner. Like I was showing you, you might not be able to see it because the hearts, but um, there, when the hearts pause, you can see my, my grout there. So if you, um, you can try the, grout paste that we're gonna make later but if you don't want to do that you can just try this 
in the same way. You can also put this in a spray bottle. So if you'd rather use this as like a pre-treat or spray for your clothes with stains, you can do that. You can do both. You can do this in a super large batch, uh, a really small batch to give, you know, for people to try it if they want to try it, but that's it. It's super easy. You can soak this to make all of your towels and your sheets really nice and bright and fresh, your socks, your hubby's undershirts, anything. This is really fantastic. So in no time flat, we made a laundry brightener with lemon and hydrogen peroxide. Super easy. All you have to do is get your food grade peroxide from Amazon or wherever you like to shop and it's going to rock your world. So that was our first recipe. <clears throat> our next one is my DIY kitchen floor tile and grout shower grout cleaner, multi-purpose grout cleaner. It's amazing. Um, I'm not really sure about the odor um, because you know, if you're just cleaning basic stuff, you know, you're going to be using your dryer balls. Like we use our dryer balls and we put essential oil on our dryer balls. So our clothes don't come out of the wash with odor. Um, and then we also use our uh, laundry soap that we make from scratch. And that has essential oil. I like to use lemon or lemongrass or wild orange in our, um, in our laundry detergent. So hopefully you don't have any odors when you're pulling your freshly clean clothes out of the dryer. But if you do, um, I would just recommend checking on those things that you're using to clean with. So our next one is our grout cleaner. So for that, we are going to start with um, the fact that really we used to have a linoleum floor before this. And then when we got ready to sell our house a couple months ago, actually before that, we really wanted to upgrade the floor to tile. And so as you can see there again, um, the hearts took a break. You can see that we cleaned that tile. And it's it was kind of shocking to me because having tile in the kitchen was an all new experience. We'd only had tile in our bathrooms upstairs before that. And I had no idea how fast it was gonna get dingy and dirty because when you're mopping it, when you're cleaning it with soap and water, the dirt from the tile is going into the grout. And so when you're cleaning it, the grout is a little bit lower. So all that dirt and grime is like going right into the grout. I don't know if anyone else had that experience. Um, when you first switch to the natural detergent on guard, I don't use the on guard liquid laundry detergent. It's just not my personal preference. Um, I only talk about products that I love and I make my own laundry soap because I found that it cleans my clothes really great. So um, I would encourage you to make your own. You can make it for two cents a load and I have a recipe and demo on my YouTube channel to watch that. So maybe if you have a couple minutes, you can watch that and um, try it out and you'll have to let me know. So, but I had no idea how fast um, that the the grout would get dingy and dirty and it was stressing me out because I'm like oh my gosh we have to sell our house I don't want to pay to have a professional grout cleaner come and we got a quote and it was gonna be like 450 bucks or something crazy like that to have the grout clean professionally and I'm like uh, ain't nobody got time for that so I tried a bunch of different things and um, this is what really worked great for me so in a glass bowl, we are gonna simply start with a half a cup of baking soda. So I'm gonna take my glass bowl, my handy dandy Pamper Chef glass bowl that I love, and we're gonna add a half a cup of baking soda. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, a half a cup of baking soda, which is about half of this. And then we're gonna add one cup of peroxide. So I'm just gonna take my peroxide from here, just measure one cup. one cup of our peroxide and this is going to fizz so just expect that it's a chemical reaction heather is our science guru so she can tell us all about that <laughs> and then we are going to add 16 drops uh, actually 10 drops i'm sorry 10 drops of our melaleuca essential oil this is super cleansing it's great for mildew mold bacteria anything like that so we're going to add 10 drops of our melaleuca and this is also commonly named tea tree oil, so Melaleuca is a Latin name, but um, I'm sure you're familiar with this. This is in a lot of men's grooming products. It's super clean and fresh. If you need something to diffuse, it is a fantastic option for diffusing. So we are just gonna mix this together. So we've got our half cup of baking soda, so it's, uh, it's one part baking soda to two parts peroxide and then our melaleuca, and we're gonna just stir this, and it's gonna be a little liquidy. And then as you let it sit, the uh, baking soda is gonna start to absorb the peroxide, and it will settle at the bottom, and it's going to make a paste. So you can let it sit for a little bit. You can add more baking soda if you want. If you don't find it to be thick enough, you can always add more. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more. I like it really thick like a paste, but you can certainly just go to your liking. It's very flexible. I'm gonna add a little more. There we go. And then you're just gonna transfer this into whatever container that you might have. And I like to do a whole batch of this 
for one cleaning session. So as you can see like there down, we have a pretty large kitchen space, it's kind of long. So what I do is I just, when I'm ready to clean, I work from one side of the kitchen to the other and I just plan on being out of the kitchen for a while for that day and um, let it kind of soak in and um, about five minutes or so, five to 10 minutes depending on how um, severe the grout stains are like if it's really really severe you can let it sit for maybe 10 minutes if it's not too severe and you're just doing a regular routine cleaning um, then you can just let it sit for like five minutes and then you can take either a cleaning toothbrush and I have a C and I wrote cleaning on the back of our toothbrush because we have a couple cleaning toothbrushes that we use and I don't ever want anyone to get those confused because we use them for like cleaning around baseboards and um, that's just how we do it around here so uh, I'll use that to clean around baseboards and really so, small areas. Yeah, you can totally use this on bathtubs, anything. So this is um, the the uh, paste that I had already made before that I've been using. And you can see that it's really thick and it just gets really nice and thick with that baking soda. And you'll just load it up on your toothbrush. Um, and if you want to, you can just take like a microfiber pad or a, you know anything you have. But if you need to scrub, you can use this scrub daddy thing. I love this. This is from um, Bath and Body Works, or not Bath and Body Works, um, Bed Bath and Beyond. And it has a really hard scrubby side and then it has kind of like a softer sponge side. And you can use this to really get in there, like you can just kind of bend it with your finger and get right in there. Or you can use your cleaning toothbrushes. Um, like if people leave toothbrushes here or you know we just have extra for company or whatever, we like to just toss all the extra ones into our cleaning cabinet and our cleaning caddy. And that way when we need to clean grout and in between any areas, um, we know that they're cleaning toothbrushes only. So you just take this amount and you can either pour it on or you can you know just glob it on. Uh, yeah, old toothbrushes are just the best. Um, you can get in really small areas too between your sink. Like if you have a sink that has two handles, you know, for the water you can get in between and underneath and it's just fantastic so you'll just take a glob um, and you know you'll want to cover the surface of the grout area let it sit for five or ten minutes and then go back over and if you need to scrub any of those areas you can get right in there you can also use your scrub daddy to get in there and then you just wipe it out with a moistened microfiber cloth your cleaning wipes whatever you might use on hand also if you have any stained t-shirts or anything like that where they've just gone beyond repair or old blankets you can use those as cleaning cloths and just toss them in the wash when you're done so this is a really great way to um, be able to clean the grout in your house and um, not use chemicals and you're using peroxide you're using the power of your essential oils and it's just really fantastic so um, you will be able to use this for quite a while but like I said I we have a really large kitchen area so what I did is I just covered the entire kitchen with the paste so one batch was perfectly enough for us and then I would let it sit and then just work from one side of the kitchen all the way around and then you can go over it again with just like water so it's really great yeah, and you want to air it out a little bit, so while it's still percolating, um, this one's the one that I've had made for a while, but while it's percolating and the, uh, the peroxide and the baking soda are mixing and you'll be able to hear it and see it because it'll be fizzing a little bit, you just want to leave it vented a little and you can already see that this is settled, so you'll see that the peroxide's on the top and the baking soda's at the bottom and you can see that paste starting to form and it doesn't take long, you know, when you're using it you can just pour it on there, uh, you can do whatever works for you, you can dip your cloth in the solution and you can just go to town and scrub and get your grout clean. So what you can do is just sort of vent it a little bit, um, you can just kind of put your lid on there and and leave it on with a little air there and you're good to go so you've got your grout cleaner and it's gonna make your life so much easier because you're not gonna have to pay someone to do the grout cleaning for you and you're gonna be able to do it with your essential workhorses and this is a small little mason jar but just use whatever you have if you have any glass Tupperware lying around or you have any old pickle jars lying around or tomato sauce jars don't throw those things away keep all of your doTERRA empties keep everything all your bottles you can even even use a um, one of the little body butter um, tins the little body butter bins you know that has like a little I can't use my words um, but the container that the body butter comes in that looks like this but it's plastic it's like a tub a little uh, shallow tub you can use that for this recipe just don't ever throw away those containers um, certainly don't be a pack rat and like have closets filled with empty containers um, but to some degree you know you want to be able to reuse all of those things and not have to buy extra glassware extra mason jars if you keep them from other projects 
So, and then our last one is my Lamazing Toilet Cleaner. So in a glass bowl, we are going to combine a fourth of a cup of baking soda. Baking soda is such a great cleaner. And then we are gonna add two tablespoons of peroxide. So we're gonna just take our bottle of peroxide and I've been able to make all these recipes with just one bottle. So this is really showing you how long you can stretch your ingredients. One tablespoon, two tablespoons. And there's still more left in here and this is a 16 ounce bottle so this is fantastic and then what we're gonna do is add a fourth cup of castile soap and I just like to use dr. Bronner's this is a liquid soap base and I love it because there's no parabens or fragrance or um, toxins synthetics anything like that it's just really fantastic and I get it in a large bottle you can see I need to get more um, I get it from the vitamin shop you can also get it on Amazon as well and then we're gonna add 16 drops of our melaleuca so this is our tea tree oil again. And like I said, the only oils that we're using tonight are lemon and melaleuca. This is so simple, so easy. If you are just getting started on your oil journey, there's no reason this is too hard for you. There's no reason you can't master this in no time flat. And it's so fun. Your kids can help you and your kids can get involved in the cleaning too because it's fun because they're making it themselves. So maybe this summer, add it to your bucket list, maybe to just one by one, start replacing the cleaners in your home. And I love these dropper tops. I get these from uh, shareoils.com. They're fantastic. Oh good, Natalie, I'm so glad you used my makeup remover and it's working amazing. Yeah, you always gotta make more. Oh, thanks Kathy, I, oh, I love sharing with you. It makes me so happy to do this. So we're gonna just mix this together and it's gonna fizz up a little bit. And then we're gonna add about a cup and a half of water to our mixture and it's gonna fizz. So just give it a little room, just like your magnesium mocktails, just give it a little room room to groove and we are going to use another one of these awesome squirt bottles from aroma tools for our toilet cleaner it's just got melaleuca in there and we're gonna just funnel this right in and I might have a little bit too much and that's okay I'll just transfer it into another bottle so I love having these craft funnels too they just make it really simple and easy because this is great these are great quality ingredients like I said that's the beauty of making our own things in our own home we control the ingredients and we don't want to waste that we want to keep all that liquid gold for our family so we're gonna just funnel this right on in And I do have a little much, so I'm gonna just save this for my next bottle because I got a set of 16. I didn't realize it was gonna be a set of 16 bottles. Um, I'm sorry, I missed your question. Do you wanna retype it for me? It went away before I get a chance to answer it. And you wanna vent this a little because it's got that baking soda and that reaction with the peroxide. You wanna just give it a little room to vent. And here we have our beautiful homemade to toilet cleaner. And for this, all you're gonna do is just squirt this mixture under the rim. Do you have to make a new batch each time you clean? It just depends on how much of it you're using um, for the grout cleaner. If you're only using it for your tubs and showers, I would say you can probably get months and months out of it because you're only using, you only probably need like maybe a quarter, two quarter size. Oh, you can store it for as long as you need, Heather. Um, if it gets too dry, if it dries out a little too much, just add a little more peroxide, add a little more water, and you know, add a little water and um, just kind of mix it up and reconstitute it and you're good to go. But um, you can let me know when you make it, um, let me know how long it lasts you. But like I said, I would like to, what I like to do is keep a whole set of my cleaners in the bathrooms where they go. So, and I've shown this on my early Periscopes where I showed the cleaners that I like to keep my 16 ounce bottles of like my big daddies um, underneath the kitchen sink and then I have eight ounce bottles underneath the bathroom in our bathroom underneath Olivia's bathroom and in the new house we're gonna have two more bathrooms than we have now so I'm gonna make another set of all those cleaners so I'm not lugging cleaning supplies all over the house it just it's not practical and it'll save you time and the whole idea of making your own cleaners is just to save you time save you money and save you from the toxic exposure so um, you're only gonna need a little bit if you're only doing a tub or a shower so you can make a small batch and um, let me know how long it lasts you, but it's gonna last you a really long time. So the one that I have upstairs in the bathrooms lasts me for probably months because I don't need to do it that often. You know, maybe like every other time that I clean, I'll need to just do the grout. You can also take a spray bottle of your peroxide and your lemon or peroxide and melaleuca and literally just spray your shower after every use and then keep a squeegee in there and just squeegee it down and you'll be good as prevention. But like maybe every other time you clean, maybe twice a month, you can go through with 
the grout cleaner and just keep it really nice and sparkly. But um, for the toilet cleaner, this will last you a really long time. You could just squirt it underneath the, the bowl. So you go like right under the bowl, like where you go with those nasty toxic things. I don't even know what they're called because I don't use them. Um, but whatever those like weird blue chemical ingredients are that you can get at Walgreens, um, you can use this instead. So what you'll do, and this is pretty thick, you'll coat it all the way underneath the rim and then you can take either a scrubby that you designate for the toilet or um, whatever kind of sponge or cleaning supply that you like to use for that and you'll just go through and scrub and just loosen any um, like mineral deposits because a lot of times, especially if you have a guest room that you don't use a lot, um, yeah, the glass cleaner is perfect for glass shower doors. And if you ever have any streaking with your vinegar and your water and your lemon um, that we use for glass, you can always just add a cap full of peroxide in there and it'll just get get um, any of those streaks. But I don't really, we don't experience the streaks. It's not an issue. Um, but if you do have that problem, if there's like soap scum or anything built up, you can use peroxide as well for that in a spray bottle. But um, this is going to last you a really long time. You can make several and just keep them underneath the sink in the bathrooms where they belong. And it's super cheap. Like I said, on Aroma Tools or Amazon, you can get a big set of these um, cool little squirt bottle tops and just you know fill them all up and set up your kids with a craft day and you can set all of them up and just pour 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 mix and have a great time um, so hopefully you enjoyed these so much but if you're working with mold to get a shower deep clean yeah you could use this um, definitely the melaleuca is what's going to help you with the mold factor so when you're using the melaleuca and you're using that in combination with the oxidizing agent of the peroxide that's what's going to give you that deep clean that you'd get from a bleach but without all the nasty stuff and um, so hopefully you found those little tips helpful. There are just so many ways to clean with peroxide. I might have to revisit this topic um, again soon because I, I had to narrow it down to three and it was just, it was hard. Um, and then I'm just gonna talk really quickly and then I'll let you guys go about the practical tips for getting your house sold fast. So you wanna do proper staging. And that just means you don't need to pay someone thousands of dollars to stage your house. But um, you can Google like how to stage your house properly, but you wanna depersonalize it. So the idea of that is taking down personal photos, family photos off the wall, anything that's, um, you know, just anything that's really personal, you want to take those down because the idea is you want to, in, you want someone to come into your home and envision them making that their home and making that full of their memories. And if all of your memories are on the walls, it's really hard for them to visualize themselves there. So. We got a welcome mat that says welcome, really nice on the front steps. And then we have a um, like a key organizer thingy on the wall and it's got like a whiteboard and we hook all of our keys there and you can uh, put sunglasses on top of it. It's like a nice organizer. And we wrote on the whiteboard, welcome home, you know, things like that just to make them feel comfortable feeling at home. Uh, also, no fake smelling nasty plugins that are gonna give them a headache or make them think you're trying to cover up mold, mildew, uh, dog and cat smells, anything like that. So what we did is we diffused our Chateau LeMay blend. And it's funny because if you've been following me for a while, then you've been on this journey with us and you know that the first three people that put in an offer and came and saw our home commented and even reached out to our realtor and said, my clients love the way that the house smelled and that's really cool that they took the time to actually make that comment and share that so um, you just want to make sure that if you're going to diffuse oils you diffuse things that are really fresh citrusy nice and clean so oils like lemon lavender and uh, lemon uh, eucalyptus and peppermint in the Chateau Le May blend that's one of our favorite blends and we like to put our diffuser blends in our roller um, in a dropper top so that it's really easy to just go through the house and boom, 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 fill up your diffusers really fast. So um, you also just wanna have, pay to have professional photos taken of your home because, uh, and a realtor should be covering the cost of this expense. It's part of the commission that they're earning when they're selling your home for you. And a professional photographer is going to have the proper uh, lenses to really get panoramic views of your home and capture the square footage in beautiful lighting because if your pictures are not uh, taken with good lighting, then most of the time people might even decide not to come and see your home and come for a listing appointment if they can't tell by the photos if it looks nice or not and the photos can really draw people in. So you want to make sure that you're talking and communicating about that with your realtor. Um, you want to spend extra time cleaning. You want to declutter all of your spaces as much as possible. I was so grateful that my parents have lots of storage space that they made available for us and I am so forever grateful because we were able to take like half of our stuff, 
maybe even more than half of our stuff over to their home and not have to worry about those things in the way. Christmas decorations, um, uh, clothes that are out of season, like all the winter stuff and all those things like bulky coats and all that filling up closets, taking up space in our storage area. You really want to remove any accent furniture, anything extra. You want to open up the space. So you want to really showcase the square footage of your home. And I personally, George and I, we're more minimalist, so we don't like to have our home filled with furniture in every crevice and every corner. Like We like to have that negative space, that open space, so that you can walk, you feel the energy is flowing through your room. You don't want to have clutter on every inch of your house. And so when people are coming into your home, they want to be like, wow, there's so much room for my stuff. There's so much space for my stuff. I wouldn't have any problem you know, with all the storage space in this house. So you want to empty each of the closets to about half. So, you know, your storage, get the decorations out of there, like I said, um, and you also want to price it properly. So for your area, ask your realtor for their marketing plan. Um, most of the time you don't even need an open house. People don't realize this, but open houses are actually for realtors to get new business because most of the time people that are coming to an open house are not qualified buyers. They do not have a realtor and they're just in the neighborhood poking around and they're nosy and they want to see inside your house. Now, not always, but most of the time this is the case. And how do I know this? Because our realtor told us that and she's been a longtime friend of mine. I went to her bat mitzvah when we were in middle school. So she's a long, uh, a long friend, long time friend, sister of the heart to me. But she's like, you don't need a, you don't need an open house. You want to have qualified buyers coming and making a private listing appointment. And that's what happened. We had like 13 or 14 showings within the first two or three days of our house being on the market. We had eight offers um, and she put all the offers in a nice spreadsheet and analyzed the quality of them all. And then, I mean, it's just really important to have someone at the helm of this transaction that's experienced, that can negotiate properly for you. She negotiated so well for us. We are gonna be able to stay in our home until our home is built. And she it, she also covered the um, the rent back. So we it was negotiated in our deal with the offerer that they would pay for one month of us to extend um, to stay in our home for the month between when we closed and when our new home is going to be finished. And that also gives us one extra week after we um, settle in our new home to get all of our stuff out and clean properly and be gone for the new folks that are going to buy the home. So just some really practical tips there. Um, reach out if you have any other questions. If you're putting your home on the market soon and you want a little bit more information, we can maybe set up a little video chat and we can talk a little bit about it. But it's just really important to be informed and aware and of course keeping your home nice and clean on a regular basis means a lot less for you to do when it comes time to actually listing your home and getting it that sparkling clean that you want it to be when people are coming into your home and envisioning themselves in your home. So hope this was helpful for you. In no time we made a toilet cleaner with Melaleuca. We made a laundry brightener instead of bleach because we're kicking that to the curb. And we made our grout paste, which is gonna be fantastic for you to clean all of your tiles in your home. So I thank you for joining me. I will see you next Thursday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend wherever you are. Use your oils, love your oils, and reach out to me if you have any questions or you wanted to get started and bring these beautiful oils into your home. I would love to support you and plug you in into our wonderful world of oils. So have a great one, guys. Bye.